Can you tell a little about uh, a little more about the steam? Yeah, that's a class that's actually brand new in the, the school where I am now. Um, so there's a, a teacher that they hired, and I think I think she's taught steam before. I'm not really sure. And I don't, I mean, I honestly don't know a whole lot about what she does in her class, but I know the kids really like it. Um, but so she'll do lessons that, that incorporate all those things, science, um, technology, engineering, some kind of art. And again, I don't know exactly what it is. And then math. But, you know, and some of the things that I see set up in her room, some of the things that the kids are making seem pretty interesting, you know, using physics and and those kinds of things. I wish I had more time to go over and, and really look and, and see what she does, but, you know, that's... Because that. I, I'm really trying to, to do something different, you know, some so the kids can get more into the music, you know. I like what you do, and I think I'd like to do more of that with my lessons, too, is um, incorporating more pop music and, and giving lessons on those. A lot of what, what the kids... Um, you know, the, the demographic that I have, of uh, a lot of them like rap music, which I don't know anything about, to be honest with you. Like, I, I don't listen to, to rap. So there's, I mean, I feel like there's a, a disconnect between my musical tastes and the, the kids and, and what they like. Um, but I, I'd like to do, because I mean, like I said, I do a lot of hands-on stuff, but, but to do things where with music that they're really into, artists that they like, um, I think they, they would be into that too. But uh, do you do you teach classical music, history of music, Mozart, Beethoven? Uh, the... Um, very little. I really don't do much of that. Like it, it, at this point, it, it's more um, music theory or fundamentals of music. Like I was saying, reading rhythms, doing the notes on the staff, learning how to play simple melodies on instruments. Oh, the other instrument I forgot was the recorder too. They do, they do learn to play the recorder. Um, and they enjoy that as, as well too. But, and I, you know, I'd like to do more of that too, but I don't know how much it would hold their interest to do the, the history of music, but, but I, you know, I could certainly do a little bit of it. What about technology? Do you have uh, mixing music, recording music? We're do working have... on getting more technology. We're, um, you know, we're working on getting grants for the entire school so that so that we can have more technology for everybody and whether that be on laptops or on iPads, something that can be more hands-on. Now what I've been able to do since since I'm you know everybody's on lockdown now is make assignments through Google Classroom for my kids, which is all music technology based. So there's um a website called Chrome Music Lab, where they have different kinds of experiments that the kids could do with music there. And the one that's, that's really pretty neat, it's, it's, it's very simple, but they can, they can write their own melody and have their own drum track, you know, but it's, it's just on a grid. So they have like two octaves worth of music and they, they can change the sound to a, a piano or a some kind of a uh, synthesized sound or, or whatever it is, but they can write their own melody and then they have like a simple bass drum, snare drum down below, you know, some kind of beat that they want to create to, to go with their melody. So, and, and I've never done that in class when, when we were in school, just because they don't have the things they can work on in front of them. You know, they, they, some of them could do it at home. Some of them unfortunately don't have the technology at home, so they're not able to do it. But, but, you know, it, maybe about half of them do, and they're, they're doing the assignments, and they enjoy that. So, so hopefully next year, if, you know, if we get the grants that we're, we're working on, and we can get those, those different pieces of technology, we, you know, I, could, I could do more of that. I have a question. Sure. A few. Which mashup uh, are you the most proud of? <laughs> I was very impressed with the Mariah Carey and Mary Manson one. <laughs> That's, yeah, I mean, I really like that one too. And it's, you know, unfortunately, I, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm overly concerned with what my viewers think, you know? So if, if I have one that has a lot of views, then that in my mind is like, oh, okay, I guess that one was really good, you know, and all of a sudden I'm really proud of that one. 
And then, but sometimes I'll have one where I think this is, I love this. This is really awesome the way that this fits together, but nobody else really thinks so. You know, it doesn't get the same amount of views. Um, the one I'm most proud of though, that's a really good question. I, you know what, I really, I do like the, the Mariah Carey, Marilyn Manson one. I, I find myself watching that one a lot. And there's this, this weird thing that I do when I go, <laughs> I go to the gym, you know, to exercise. And, and the first thing that I do is just get on the treadmill and just, just walk for a few minutes to warm up. But I'll, I'll have my phone just sitting up in front of me and I'll just, I'll watch the mashups that I've made on there, just on, you know, on the, on the phone. And I find myself watching that one a lot. It's just, it, it just, it fits together so well. And the two styles for the, you know, the, the Mariah Carey, Marilyn Manson, they're, they're so different. They're completely different. And it's, you know, putting those together just seems to somehow make fun of both songs at the same time, you know? <laughs> and I, I really like that about it. And it's, and it's something that I don't think is just a novelty, but but something that people would listen to more than once, you know, and, and really enjoy. So honestly, I think if I were to pick the one that I'm the most proud of, that would probably be it. Uh, my other question is, uh, uh, I don't know. What's your favorite music genre for mashups, for making them mm -hmm. rock, maybe? Yeah. Um, and that's, I, I pretty much always use some kind of rock music, whether that's rock and roll or more often than not, it's more heavy metal or hard rock, just because that's more of an extreme. And that's what I go for is, is always some kind of extreme. So if I'm using heavy metal for the one side of it, then I, I have to use some kind of cheesy pop music for the other side, you know, to make them go together. Now, my favorite combination, though, is to have a, a, a metal instrumental part with the soul or the R&B vocals over top of it. I just, for whatever reason, I love that. And a, a, lot of, a lot of my viewers will comment, too, that that's their favorite. It just, they sound so good together. And, you know, they're... It doesn't really make for a funny mashup. There's nothing really f that funny about it, but it just sounds really cool. And it, but going the opposite way, if you use heavy metal vocals with pop music, and, and probably the most extreme one I've done of that was um, Slipknot and the Spice Girls, yeah. if you've heard that one. <laughs> which, you know, it was the Spice Girls music, um, Wannabe, which was, that song was so popular when I was in, high school, I guess it was back in the 90s, and you, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing that song. And then, of course, Slipknot, having, you know, the way that their vocals are, putting that over top of pop music is, was just so funny. But the reason that that one worked as well as it did was the, the one rhythmic figure that happens at the end of every vocal phrase is exactly the same rhythm that's happening in the, in the instrumental. So it sounds, you know, they, they go together so well to the point where it's hard to imagine that they that it didn't really happen that way that it's something that I that I put together myself and that that's another thing that I try to go for too is to to pick songs that that go together so well that you think well how did these songs ever not exist together how is this the first time that I'm hearing these if you know at the same time um, so yeah do you have more questions no uh, what do your students think about your mashups? Are they proud of you? <laughs> Not as proud as I would like to think. And I, I think the reason that is is because they don't really know the songs. A lot of the stuff that I use is, is old music. You know, some of it is older than I am. Um, so they don't necessarily know it. Uh, which is actually really cool talking to you guys because I can tell that that you're more familiar with the stuff that I use and, and just by the questions that you're asking, which is awesome. I wish more of my students were, were like that and, and were asking me questions about it. The question that, that they ask me, as soon as I tell them that I have a YouTube channel 
and that I have a lot of subscribers is, is how much money are you making on YouTube? And I, you know, <laughs> and I have to tell them every time, nothing. They're like, they don't give you anything. And I have to explain, no, I don't have the rights to the music. So all the, you know, all the money generated goes to the artist, blah, blah, blah. And then that's the end of the conversation, you know, <laughs> but I, I have played some of them for, for some of the older kids and they were kind of into it. Not as much as I'd hope. Not enough where I'm, I would say, okay, I can make this a regular part of my lessons where I can show them these and, and you know. But it's something that I think I should do more of just to, to make them do it and, and, and have them write some kind of a response to it. You know, ask them questions about it. You know, what did you think about this combination? Um, you know, did you enjoy it kind of a thing? But, but so, it, you know, so far they're not as into it as I would like. Maybe you should put 50 cents together with Iron Mendel and something like that, you know? That would be sweet. <laughs> But if they're listening hip hop rap, could be good for them. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and when you combine the two, two different genres like that, it's like a, a, a new genre in and of itself, you know? Uh, what do you uh, do in the free time? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I do spend a lot of time doing those. Um, but, you know, I'll spend time with my kids, too. I, I do have two kids. I have a, a seven year old boy and a four year old girl. So I'll spend time with them. Um, sometimes we play video games together. They have iPads and they have. Um, do you guys know what Roblox is? Yeah. You ever hear of Roblox? So they play Roblox a lot. And there's all these different games that happen in there. And it's. Some of them are fun. Some of them are <laughs> really frustrating. It's probably because I'm old and I, you know, I, I grew up on Nintendo, um, you know, original Nintendo, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, you know, all of those things. So I'm, I'm more used to those kinds of games. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll spend time with them. Uh, you know, I, I go to the gym a few days a week, or at least I used to before we were on lockdown. Um, yeah. Pretty much. I, I don't watch a lot of TV, sometimes some TV shows, sometimes movies on my phone or whatever. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so you said uh, that you are a guitarist, right? Guitarist, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a guitarist too and a backpiper too, but this is another question. Uh, uh, I My question is, uh, what was your first trip that you have ever learned on a guitar. <laughs> That's a good and, question. <laughs> and um, uh, you say that you like rock and metal, so uh, which metal you prefer? I, I mean uh, Swedish metal or American metal? Mm -hmm. Okay, good questions. The very first riff that I ever learned to play was by Nirvana. Um, Come As You Are, if you know that song by Nirvana, That was one, and um, Smells Like Teen Spirit, once I was able to do some power chords and things, I was doing those. And then at that point, I, I started guitar lessons pretty much right after that. My, you know, my parents were always really supportive, and they, they put me in guitar lessons, and um, I started to do more songs like that. But then I started to listen to things like Black Sabbath and Deep Purple, and I thought, oh, I like this a lot better. <laughs> so, so that's, you know, and as far as the kind of metal that I like, I love Black Sabbath, you know, or, or Ozzy, solo Ozzy. I love that kind of stuff. So, you know, British metal and, you know, Judas Priest. I love Judas Priest, yes. Iron Maiden. This is one of my favorite bands too. Yeah. Oh, I love that stuff. And, you know, and I have that on my playlist and that, you know, I, I, I love Judas Priest, and that's that's something that's that's on my to-do list is to do a mashup with Judas Priest music, not his vocals, but his you know his music, and um, I haven't been able to find a good combination yet, so I, that's that's on my list though, but that's you know I, and I and I like other '80s um, more like what we call hair metal, you know, and which would be more like Motley Crue and Poison and. White Snake and and those kinds of things and and oh I don't know do you guys know White Snake? You know who White Snake yes, is? Of course. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you know who David Coverdale is, the lead singer. Uh, 
Well, yeah. I think I'm usually to Bulgaria, so... <laughs> okay. But in, <laughs> their concerts. Yeah. So, um... So David Coverdale is the lead singer of Whitesnake, but but he on on his Twitter he shared one of the mashups that I did with one of his songs, and I did it. It was a, a while ago. I did it. It was last summer that I that I did it. But um, yeah, he shared it. He actually shared it twice. He did it one day, and then I guess a couple days later because he he really liked it. So I thought that was awesome. And that's that's another thing that I've had a few people, a few of the artists share them um, either on their Facebook pages. Or on Instagram, and Zach Wild was another one. Um, you know, he's in. I, I knew him from from Ozzy Osbourne, of course, and a couple Oz, a couple albums that he did with Ozzy. But then he he has Black Label Society, and um, the one of the songs he did. Uh, what was it called? Um, oh, the name escapes me right now. But I, I did one at one of Black Label Society songs. Sleeping Dogs. Maybe. No, um because I'm a big fan of oh, Zach Wild. So. It was uh it was called Suicide Messiah. That was the name of the, the Black Label Society nice, song. Nice. Um and that, that main riff on that song just fit really well with the Temptations Ball of Confusion. So it was the Temptations vocals, which they're, you know, an old soul group from the sixties, seventies. Um which I don't know if you guys know that. My own students wouldn't know that. So that's why I say, like, I don't know if you know this, this music or not. But he liked it so much. I think he shared it on his Instagram like three different times. You know, just he just keeps putting it up. He just he really liked it. And that's awesome. You know, that, that the, the artists whose music that I use, they really like the combination. So that I mean, that's huge. I, I think that's so cool that they they actually enjoy it. So. Thank you. Sure. In school, are you the serious one and the strict one or the funny one? Am I the way? What do you mean? <laughs> uh, are you a funny teacher or oh. you know, a yeah. strict teacher? I try to be funny. I try to joke with the kids. Yeah, and once I get to know them better, I think, you know, that, that'll that happen more. I did that a, a lot more with the students in the school where I used to work because I, I had had them for a few years. So I would joke around a lot, especially with the older ones, the kids your age, because in the school where I used to work, I had up, up through eighth grade. Um, so definitely with the, the middle school kids, the sixth, seventh and eighth graders, I would I would joke more. I try not to be too serious. You know, it's it's more fun. And the kids will they'll learn more when they're enjoying themselves and they're, you know, and they feel like they have a teacher they can they have a good rapport with and they can joke around with. So, yeah, I, I do. I joke around. How are you teaching now with uh, Google class Classroom? Yeah. Google Classroom, yeah. So I'll up upload a few assignments um, and just ha you know post them for the kids, and then they can just whatever they have to do. They uh, and the, the assignments are pretty simple. You know, like I said, they they one of the the assignments which was the most complicated one was where they had to write a song, um, a short melody. But then I had another assignment that was was also using. Um, what did I say? Oh, Chrome Music Lab. I was also using Chrome Music Lab, where they had some kind of a, a rhythm experiment where they would, uh, there were different um, meters, so a meter of three or four or six, and and they would they would do different beat combinations within those meters, and uh, you know I would ask them questions about that, or there was another one where they could draw something on the screen. And it would play back what they draw. So if, it, if they drew like a, a triangle shape, it would actually sound like a like a metal triangle. Or if they, they drew a, a circle, it would just turn into a smiley face automatically and it would play some kind of a cool sound. Um, so yeah, but it's it's just all been through Google Classroom. Where I'll have them do, uh, watch a video and um, you know comment something that they liked about the video. It's, I don't know if you've ever heard of this thing called Anna Music. It's A-N-I. M U S I C, where these it's a, a whole team of people that put these really cool computer animations together with music, but it would be something to check out. I think you know young people are, are really into that kind of thing, and um, and you might like that too. So yeah, look up Anna Music. Anna Music. Okay. Uh, about the uh, what did you say? Is called the, the program they can draw something and make in music. Is it free? It's free. Is, uh, yeah, it's free. it's free. It's called Chrome Music Lab, like like Google Chrome. 
you can message him that to me. Sure. I'll forget. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Last question for me. Okay. Uh, uh, which was the first album that you bought? You have ever Ooh. bought? <sighs> Different question. <laughs> That's a really good question. I think it was probably Nevermind by Nirvana. I think that was the first one. And then right around that time, I also bought one by The Offspring, which is similar you know, alternative music. Um, but then I remember there was one Christmas where my, my dad bought me the, the Deep Purple album. And I think it was um, the best of Deep Purple. So it had songs like um, Smoke on the Water or Highway Star, um, Space Truckin', all those. and, and a Stranger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and... Um, and then the Black Sabbath one, we sold our souls for rock and roll, so that had Iron Man and Paranoid and War Pigs and um, you know all of those. And that that's where I, at that point it's like this is the stuff that I love. This you know the the hard rock metal stuff. And I mean later I got into other stuff. If, if I were to name a, a favorite band, if you can call them a band, um, Steely Dan. If you guys know who Steely Dan is, they were more of a, a jazz. Um, jazz rock pop fusion kind of a thing where their their songwriting that they did is just i've never heard i mean for me it's it's just the best and i love the stuff that they did but it's totally different than than heavy metal so i mean i definitely love the metal and the hard rock stuff but then on, on the other side i really like the stuff that steely dan did and they had they were and, and why i say you know you can't really call them a band because in their their later albums in the 70s they would hire just studio musicians so they had the two two core people in the band, so uh, Walter Becker and and Donald Fagan, but they would they would hire different session players. So they would hire a certain drummer for a certain sound. They had a whole arsenal of guitar players that they would use for different solos and and songs and and um, so it was whatever they wanted. And they were you know as close to to perfect as possible, I guess when you when you when you think about um, music. But they, yeah, they, they're, they're my all-time favorite. Um, do you know the band Rage Against the Machine? Yes, definitely. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's one of my favorites, uh, and if you want, you should make a um, mashup with uh, a Rage Against the Machine instrument. Or... Yeah, I would love to. And I, I tried one, and it was unfortunately one of the ones where I just kind of said, eh, it, the, the combination wasn't great, but it was um, uh, Killing in the Name was the, the instrumental, and it was with the Beatles come together. And I thought, well, this will be really cool. This will work so well, but the, the thing that was weird about it was that the, the rhythm from the vocal part from the Beatles tune was almost too similar to the rhythm in the Rage Against the Machine. And it, it sounded like they were, they were just kind of locked together and it didn't groove very well. And it was like, nah, just put that one aside, start on something new. But, but yeah, that, that's on my, my list to do. like either, you know, Killing in the Name or Testify or Bulls yeah. on Parade, the, those kinds of things. I, I, I like that stuff too, definitely. Actually, I... Uh... I just record a new cover of Killing in the name of, so I should upload it in a few days. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I'd like to check it out. I will share with you. For sure. Most definitely. Bill, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, it was really a pleasure. It was very interesting for, for me. I hope for them also, and I hope for our uh, users Good. the musical TV. I'll not translate it. I'll just edit it like that, and I'll share it. So okay. I'll send you the link. Very good. Uh, so you're popular now in Bulgaria. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And ako tva koe tu pravi vi karesva. Palec na gore. Abonirajte se. Kampanjeta. И споделете видеото с вашите приятели. До следващия път. Чао!